All right, lads, welcome to this quick video about my tips for top tier War Thunder, specifically uh, realistic battles. I'm not really known in the War Thunder community for being a fantastic pilot. So if you want more videos, I'd highly recommend checking out Seek Ahead or Define or anyone else like that. But anyway, my first tip, and this might be a little bit of a, uh, a hack point is, but don't rush for top tier, really. None of the War Thunder content creators that I know and speak to, they don't play top tier for fun. They play it mainly for content, really. The sweet spot for top tier jet, well, not top tier jets, but the sweet spot for jet combat at the minute is between 7.0 and 8.3, 8.7. Not top tier, but still outside the range of the AM9L, so the A10 spam and the SU25 spam. Obviously, planes like 9.3 get dragged up to that quite a lot. So anything below that is kind of the sweet spot at the minute. The most fun jets in the game at the minute for me are things like the LA-15, the MiG-15 Bis and the Meteor Mark. Is it 8 or something like that? Not top tier jets, no missiles, no fancy flares, just good old fashioned dogfighting. Not many people like that though, but that is definitely where the most fun in jet combat is currently in War Thunder. Battle ratings 8.7 and upwards, you start running the risk of going up against jets like the SU-25 and the A-10, which both have very potent anti-air missiles, and chances are at 8.7 your plane isn't going to have flares. It is quite a painful grind if you are trying to unlock jets at a higher battle rating while using these early planes, and many players simply just buy a premium with missiles and flares to simply get around this. It's almost like Gaijin have created it, so that you have to buy a premium to be competitive. Hmm. Shady business practices aside, to get into the actual tips of a of top tier jets, it's don't dogfight. That's probably my biggest tip. Now, what I mean by this is, if you go into the merge at the start of a game, don't do a 180 and try and dogfight them. If you go into a fight or a merge, as it's called, and you don't get a kill. Just keep on flying, it doesn't matter if you, ex well, it's called extending, you just extend past the enemy, fly straight for, a, well, about a minute, 30 seconds, then turn around when it's safe and come back in. This way you aren't making yourself vulnerable to the enemy who can do the same to you, you aren't making yourself vulnerable to other enemies that can come in and gang up on you, and it never really gets you trapped in like a low energy setting. You're always at a decent amount of speed, which gives you options if you do run into an enemy. While some of the lower battle ratings in War Thunder are around the props, you can get away with one-on-one -on -one dogfights. Due to the nature of top tier jets being so fast, allowing them to close distances very quickly, as well as having long range missiles now in the game, you can't really have a one-on-one -on -one dogfight anymore. It's just asking to get missiled from a third party that you probably haven't seen. So while it can be very tempting to just try and get a kill at the start of the game by fighting the first person you see in a dogfight, you almost certainly are either going to get killed by someone you don't see, or one of your teammates is arguably going to kill the person that you're dogfighting, and I think the, the latter is actually more frustrating. You do all the hard work, get an enemy into a low energy position, and just as you're about to click fire missile, uh, a friendly F-14 kills them from 10 kilometers away. Very annoying, but it's just as annoying as getting killed. So if you go into a fight and the enemy turns, just keep on going straight, extend, do a 180 and then come back in. Basically flying your top tier jet the same way you'd fly a P-47. Another tip that I'd give to pretty much everyone is that you have to understand the nature of top tier war thunder now. It's more about having a lot of teammates around you. Basically the first team in a top tier jet match that starts to lose players is almost certainly going to lose. You can't really carry games anymore unless you're a god like to find. It's kind of an illusion really, it's not, it's quite hard to accept that you as an individual will have a very small impact on a battlefield. It's about you and your team swarming an enemy team. So while you may be tempted to kind of go your own way and go solo at the start of a match to avoid enemy players, it's not really helping your team out. You want as many of your teammates to be as not close to you to the point where you're flying into them, but you want to be all supporting each other in a fairly close distance. This means no one gets taken by surprise because you've always got a friendly teammate around you to at least distract an enemy, if not shoot them down. But what I'm trying to say is that you need to kind of stay close to your teammates. As top tier jet matches are determined more by mob action rather than individual acts of greatness. This tip can also be built upon by if you have friends, unlike me, none of my friends play War Thunder, but if you play in a squad, it A, helps you stick close by each other, 
most squad mates are you going to be in you know, you're going to be over comms or discord you're going to be fairly near each other on the battlefield helping each other out which obviously increases the teamwork maybe not across the whole team but certainly among you and your friends and it also makes it easier to grind having something to distract you when you're flying especially if you're playing top tier war thunder which is very very repetitive to be honest having like a friend there that's bantering with you and keeping you distracted having a bit of fun with the boys you know everything what i mean so it both helps you tactically it helps you win games really having someone that can give you a warning if someone's behind you and it just makes the mood a little bit more chill and helps you grind out helps you grind out planes without getting stressed out really but anyway my next tip is don't be the first person into the fight it's very easy if you're playing a fast jet i know me i kind of get a little bit frustrated especially when playing something like a mig 29 i just go full after burner at the start of a match and basically just go head on into the enemy i do usually end up getting one or two kills but i usually die pretty soon and you're probably thinking well if you're the first person on your team to meet the enemy all of the enemies are going to focus you and basically that's the point i'm trying to make it kind of goes hand in hand with the point i made last where you need to stick around your teammates don't bolt off straight towards the enemy if you notice a lot of your teammates are like flying to the side a little bit follow them even if it means coming off the afterburner and kind of slowing down a bit just stay around your teammates like i said it helps you win the matches because you've got your teammates around you more importantly it gives the enemies someone else to shoot at and as i said at the very beginning if you yolo off at the start of a match and get yourself shot down then your team is immediately at a massive disadvantage as potentially there is four to eight high performance missiles taken out of the game straight away that brings me on to my next couple of tips which is mainly revolving around weaponry at top tier even though you do have a lot of missiles and the majority of your kills probably are going to be missile kills you still should rely on your main gun as your primary source of getting kills now that might sound counterintuitive and maybe i'm not really um describing it as well as i could be but whenever you go into a fight you should be thinking about getting a gun kill rather than just saying oh i'm going to get a missile kill here you should be thinking well if i position myself like this even if my missile misses i can still go in for a gun kill i think a mistake a lot of people make is they get to top tier and they kind of forget all the skills that they've learned throughout the war thunder career quote unquote you know you've got to use your aiming your, you've got to manually aim your guns until you get to about 9-3 and people get to top tier and they say oh well, that's boring i don't really need to shoot guns anymore and they just rely on the missiles and they are really losing out on a vital skill in war thunder and it's not just you know pointing and clicking it's the whole process of thinking okay well if i move here behind him even if my missile moves i'm going to be able to throttle drop and still get a kill i see quite a lot of people firing three or four missiles at someone when they're right on the tail when they could easily just get a gun kill but they just keep on spamming the missiles at them even though the enemy is flowing and rolling those missiles are never going to hit but a lot of people they just kind of refuse to use their guns i know a lot of these tips might be just common sense for the majority of people but i feel like there's a lot of players who have just bought premiums to top tier and they kind of just don't really know what they're doing particularly the f5e players and a10 players but yeah another thing is that you can again see this particularly with f5e players uh, not f5e f5c players sorry they don't really use any of the theory that they've learned or they should have learned playing props like ropey dopes boom and zooms like a lot of people like if you're fighting an a10 thunderbolt you want to do a um hammerhead on well not a hammer because you don't want to stall but you want to energy fight them basically refuse to go into a merge go up and come down on top of them the a10 doesn't really have high thrust to weight you can't really hang whereas most jets are with an afterburner can do a lot of people refuse to do any sort of air combat maneuver and they just either spam missiles or just spam guns and again this is something that i'm guilty of i think all people are guilty of this we kind of just go oh, i want to get a few easy kills and go back to the hangar and do it all again but it is a lot more rewarding if you do actually try to at least lap as a real pilot but anyway, these last couple of tips are dedicated to some of the more noobish premium players out there is don't try and fox one joust if you don't know what you're doing. Now what I mean by fox one jousting it's when you use a fox one missile like an AIM-7F. I don't think there are many premiums with AIM-7F. I don't know. There actually are. Quite, quite a lot of the premium phantoms have fox one missiles. 
It's basically locking onto an enemy with radar and then firing an AIM-7 or some other type of missile like that at an enemy player. A big mistake that people make when they do this is that they keep afterburning when they are travelling towards that enemy. If that enemy has launched a missile at you as well, if you are afterburning you're actually making it easier for them to get a kill because you are decreasing the time it takes for their missile to hit you. If you are in a FOX-1 joust and an enemy is shooting at you and you are shooting at them, Come off your afterburner, slow down, and turn to the side slightly. This decreases the speed at which you are closing to that enemy, which increases the time it takes for the missile to hit you. This basically gives you more time to notch and to try and ultimately defeat the incoming missile. And if they don't do the same thing to your missile, you're probably going to get the kill 99% of the time. Fox 1 jousting has become very popular with planes like the MiG-29 and the F-14 or F-16s. I assume if you have those planes that you already are quite familiar with War Thunder top tier combat and you probably know more than me to be honest. That's just a tip I'd give to any new players is don't try and Fox 1 joust unless you know what you're doing. Another tip I'd give is stay pretty low and fast. If you go up to higher altitudes you are just going to be killed by Fox 1s in a Fox 1 joust which you probably aren't going to win if you don't know what you're doing. Especially if you're a plane that doesn't have any Fox 1 missiles, just stay low and fast, it's easier to notch and it's easier to hide yourself with the radar clutter. Alright lads, I know that this video is dragging on quite a bit as so I don't want to keep you anymore. My final tip that I give you though is that there's nothing wrong with ground striking in top tier matches, especially if you are a multi-role fighter. It is important to know though that you will be making your team slightly weaker, as I said at the start of the video. If an enemy jet is destroyed or is taken out of the combat, i.e. they are ground striking in the opposite end of the map where the combat is taking place, you are making it harder for your team to win. But if you're in a premium jet and you're just you're not really comfortable with earth to earth fighting, ground striking enemy bases on your way to the combat or ground striking enemy AI tanks, it is a viable strategy to grind. Espe again, especially if you aren't a competent War Thunder player yet and you are just trying to learn. It is a good way to grind and earn RP, you aren't going to make as much if you do, if you do get earth to earth kills. But if you aren't good enough to get earth to earth kills, it's better to grind bases and stuff like that than just being constantly killed every time. What I would recommend doing though is taking missiles and bombs, dropping the bombs on enemy bases at the start of a match, and then at least trying to get kills in the mid to late game. This way you get some guaranteed RP at the start of a match, and you still contribute to your team hopefully winning matches. But you should actively try and not ground strike. You should be trying to just play purely earth to earth combat as soon as you can. Because as I've said across this whole video, you need as many dedicated earth to earth players as possible to win matches. So to conclude, try and play with friends to lessen the grind and make it a generally better experience. Understand your missile systems. Try and stay around your friendly teammates. If they aren't helping you out, they're at least being a target for the enemy instead of you. And it's okay to ground pound at the start of a match, but please do try to help your team in the mid part of the game. And finally boys, probably what I've said at the very, well I did say at the very start of the game, but don't idolise top tier jets. They aren't as fun as they look. It's a lot more rewarding for me personally to get a gun kill at 8.0 or 8.7. While top tier jets are very flashy, they're quite frustrating to play. They aren't very rewarding, it actually, a lot of people just say it kills War Thunder for them because it's just spawn, get shot down by a missile, repeat, repeat, repeat. But anyway, that's this is a long video, I do apologise. Big thank you to all my YouTube members, you really do help the channel grow, we're nearly at 31,000 now, very pleased with the channel's growth, apart from having my YouTube channel hacked. But anyway, thank you very much for watching lads, I'll see you in the next video.